I'm super excited. I have a very special guest. My daughter Ashlyn is with me this week. Hi. And we are going to be making the Braveheart backpack. All right, like I said, my daughter Ashlyn is here with me and we are making this adorable Braveheart backpack, which is another pattern brought to you by Quilt Cadets and Little Pincushion Studio. If you didn't catch uh, the feature we did with Latifa on the last project I filmed with Ezra, be sure to go back and uh, hear Latifa talk about this amazing Quilt Cadets program because it's just so inspiring and powerful. And I love that I get to sew this with you, Ash. It's gonna be fun, huh? Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell everybody what they need to get started making this backpack? Sure. For the main fabric, you need two thirds of a yard of cotton canvas. And so this is what we're using for our main fabric. And then for contrast fabric, you need um, half a yard of cotton canvas. Yes, and we used this for the contrast and for the lining. So for the lining, you need an additional two third yard. Yeah, so a half yard plus two thirds of a yard. So if you do a yard and a quarter, that should be close, I think. Quilt math is tricky, right? And then you're also going to need some interfacing and that is two and a quarter yards, Yes. right? Uh, and it's a lightweight woven fusible. And then I also wanna point out that there's these great um, Brave Heart backpack hardware kits that include everything you need for the hardware. And so that's the buckles, the, um, what is this stuff called? I can't even think of it. Like the paracord and the webbing for the different handles and straps. So I really recommend this hardware kit. Otherwise the pattern lists all of the individual pieces that you need, but just picking this up makes it super easy. All right, so should we dive in and get started? Yep. All right. So when you open up your Quilt Cadets pattern, you'll notice on this first page, it tells you to um, go online and there's a download code. And what you wanna do is you're gonna do that. It has a unique code in the pattern where you can download the printable pattern pieces like you see here beside me. And so we've gone ahead and printed all of those off and we've done all of our um, pinning and cutting already. But that's the first step you're gonna wanna do once you get your pattern. So you'll have all of those downloaded. Another thing to note is when we're quilting, we usually use a quarter inch seam allowance, right? Mm -hmm. Which is right along that line. Yeah. But they recommend a three eighths inch seam allowance. So that's a little bigger than a quarter, a little less than a half. So we're just gonna hang over that quarter inch just a little bit. And that just gives us a little bit of a wider seam allowance so we don't risk anything um, coming unraveled or anything like that, especially when we're working with this heavier weight canvas. So you wanna keep that in mind. And then since we are using some heavier materials like the canvas, like the webbing, they also recommend a uh, 9014 sharp or Microtex needle. So make sure your machine has one of those as well. So that is what we've got started. And then one of the other things I like that they include in these uh, Quilt Cadets patterns is it talks about some of the things you're gonna to learn to improve your sewing skills. And so in this, you're gonna learn how to use the back stitch on your machine. And you're also going to learn about interfacing because we are using some interfacing to give this bag a little bit of stability, which is great, right? And so let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, we've already cut out our pattern pieces, pinned them to all of our different fabrics and cut those out. I do wanna point out on the pieces themselves, you'll notice that it might say, you know, cut two from the main fabric, two from the lining, and two from the interfacing. And so you just wanna pay attention to that on the pieces themselves and make sure you follow those instructions exactly like it says, right? Yep. Okay, so the very first step we're going to do now that we have that done is we are going to open up our hardware kit and we have some cutting to do there. So do you see right here where it says what we need to do? So from our one and a half inch webbing, which is this, that's our wider piece here. Mm -hmm. So what sizes do we need to cut? Um, cut two pieces of 35 inches long for the shoulder, shoulder straps. Um, one piece 12 inches long for the hanging loop 
and two pieces four inches long for the strap tabs. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut each of those. So we need two at 35 inches. So let's do that first. Actually, I'm gonna flip this around. I've got my end over here at zero. Ash, do you wanna cut it or do you want me to cut it? Um, you can do it. All right, so now we'll put our ruler over here on the 35. I just had this on the fold. So I'm getting two for one. So there's our two 35. Inch. And then we need one 12 inch. Yep. Okay. So I've lined this up over here. One 12 inch piece. And then what are our other two measurements? Two four inch. Oh, yeah. two four inch. Okay. So then let's make two more cuts here. One. And two. There we go. And you see you just have a little bit extra. They give you the exact amount to be able to make these straps. So then we have to cut some pieces from the smaller webbing, right? Yep. All right, so that's our one inch. I've got that here. So what measurements do we need on that one? Uh, one 10 inch long for the bottom of the buckle and one five inch long for the top of the buckle. Okay, one 10 inch. We'll make that cut. There's that one and one, you said five? Yes. Okay. Five inches. There we go. And there is our extra again. So I've got those. And then looks like we need to do some pieces from the paracord too. Yeah. So what size are we looking for on that? Four and a half feet or 54 inches. Some nice long cuts on that one. All right. So let's open this up. Try to make it mom proof, I think. And then 54 inches. Let's see here. So 36 plus what equals 54? Um. <laughs> Quick math, you can do it. Oh my gosh. I, the pressure is yeah. 18. Come okay. on. 36 plus 18. Okay. So I've got this on the fold again and we'll make this little cut. Really, we probably could have just cut this in half to start and then trimmed it down later if we wanted to. But there's our extra little bit and our two paracord pieces. So now we have all of those ready to go. All of our pattern pieces are cut and ready as well. And we can get some of this out of the way. And then now that all of that is trimmed, we are going to start sewing the front of our bag. All right, so we're gonna start sewing the front of the bag. You ready for that? Yeah. Okay, so we decided to make most of the bag this black fabric, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a piece of that. It's one thing you do wanna keep track of. You'll notice on my little pattern here, we actually wrote the main fabric was our black and the lining was our white or tan just to keep us straight. And so I'm gonna pull a piece of our black fabric. This is gonna be the front of our bag. And Ashlyn's already gone ahead and folded this and pressed it, but why don't you show everybody what you did there? So we're gonna fold it. We're gonna take the two short sides and meet those up, right? Mm -hmm. And then press it in half. So she's finding the center of our bag front so that we have a reference point. Just give that a good press all the way down the middle. Perfect. Now we've got a nice crease, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then our first step is we're going to add this buckle. Okay. And so it says to separate out this little pokey part. We're going to save that for later. And this piece we just need to attach to the bottom here. So we're going to use the longer piece that we cut from our one inch webbing. I've got that here. And Ash, it says to feed this through here and then overlap it behind about three inches. So do you want to do that? Sure. Okay. Okay. 
There you go. Do you think that looks good? You've got a little ruler here, so you could test it out. Oh, that's pretty good eyeballing. It's right at three inches. Good work. And so now why don't you put a pin, you should have some pins there beside you, to hold that together, just right through there so that it doesn't slip. Lots of layers, so don't poke yourself. You gotta be careful. There we go, excellent. And now you're gonna line that up right on that middle mark. And so line up the bottom with the edge. There you go, and you're just gonna center that. So go ahead and put another pin maybe in there so that it will stay where you need it to go. You've got it. There we go, and do you want maybe one more at the top? Just hold all that together. Whatever you think you need. Can you get it? Make sure it's all laying flat. You got it, you can do it. There we go. Push, there you go, excellent. Okay, so now she's got her pins in there. And then it says our next step is to measure down using a erasable or water soluble marker. And so we've got that here. So we're gonna measure down from the bottom of this buckle and you can use this little ruler here. And we need to measure down an inch and a half. And you wanna draw a line. So just right at the bottom there. You can use a different color if that one's not showing up as well for you. You have to close it all the way and then switch it. There you go, wanna try that one? And then just make a mark straight across there. You can see it. Perfect. Okay, so now the goal is we are going to put this under the machine and you're going to sew straight down just about an eighth of an inch from that edge and then across, you'll turn and go across and then back down. Okay, does that make sense? Just make sure you don't sew over your pin. You're going to sew up, turn on that line and come back down okay. like a big U. So let's go ahead and take that first pin out because you don't want to run over it. So we'll put that under the presser foot and then just stitch away. Is that right? Yeah, you're doing great. And then just slow down before you get to that. Yep, and pull that pin out of the way. Good work. Keep going. And then stop, and then you can lift this and turn. Oh, the other way, there you go. Put your presser foot down again. Right there. There you go. And then now turn. Perfect. Straight down that side. You're good. All right, now you can cut your thread right there. Good work. You can take that last pin out. There we go. Show everybody that a little bit. You wanna hold that up? This way? Either way, so they can see it. So she's got the buckle oh. added in there with the little loop, looks great. Okay, so now the next step is we need to add the casing. There's a drawstring on this bag, and so we are gonna learn how to make a casing. So let's set this aside for now, and we have our pieces that we cut out from our contrasting fabric for the casing. So Ashlyn, the first step to do this, it's our piece that looks like this. We're gonna turn each end under about a quarter of an inch and press it. So do you wanna do that? over at the ironing board. Yep, just about like that, that looks great. Your side one, and the other side. Yep, you've got this. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and stitch straight across to hold that fold down, okay? Just like that. Just like that. Good work. Okay, now flip around and do the other side. There you go. That looks great, sis. All right, so now that you have that done, you're gonna fold this in half long ways and press it just like that, okay? So take that over to the iron and press it in half. That's off. <laughs> it's all right, you can just line it up again. Just do a little bit at a time. You don't have to do the whole thing at once. You just start from one side and work your way down. Sometimes that helps. There you go. And you've got a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't have to be perfect. Ta-da! And we actually already made the other one. So that one's done. You're gonna do both, but for this part, you just need one to begin with. So we're gonna take that same bag front that we had before and we are going to line this up across the center. So it, same way you pressed the center line on the bag front. If you fold this in half this way and press another crease or just finger press a crease there, whatever you wanna do, you can use the iron. There you go. And then now you can line up that line right with the center line you, you did here. Nope, oh, this way. We're gonna line this up across oh. the top. Yeah, so see now your, your one that you just pressed matches up exactly. And you can put a couple pins in here if you need them. And we're just gonna take, there you go, got it. Perfect. You got it. Oh, yep, keep it lined up right there. And it says to sew nice and close to that top edge because you're just going to kind of hold it in place. So as close as you can to that top edge without losing your, your bottom piece, okay? Okay. Like there? Yep, exactly. You might back stitch. So you push that little lever down, yep, hold it down and take a couple stitches and now let it go and now trim your thread. There you go. All right, so the front of the bag is ready, right? So let's clear some of this out and move on to the next step. Okay, up next we're going to make the flap, the top part of the bag that folds over and clips it together, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our bag flap pieces from our pattern, and you'll notice that we cut two from our contrasting fabric and two from our interfacing. Um, just for me to help keep this all straight, we used our interfacing with our light fabric every time. And so if you're not familiar with that, this is our interfacing, and one side is bumpy, and one is almost just like a traditional quilter's cotton. Can you feel those bumps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the bumpy side of the interfacing is gonna to go to the wrong side of our fabric. Okay. And this is just gonna give it a little extra stability and, and body. And so if you wanna now take this and make sure it's all lined up and press that at the iron, okay? You always wanna make sure the bumpy side is towards the fabric, otherwise it will stick to your iron and that will be trouble, huh? Yeah. Bad news. Perfect. Okay, is it all sticking together? Seems to be. Okay, so now just like you did on the bag front when we were working on that, 
will you fold this in half so you have a crease down the middle? Yeah, and press it just like that. So you can take that over there, make sure it's all lined up. Good work. All right, so then now our next step is to add the buckle to the front of this because that will then attach okay. to the bottom, right? Okay, so let's find our pieces. There we go. Here's the other half of our buckle and we've just slid this through, right? Mm -hmm. And we do wanna double check that this is gonna go the right way. So that goes like that. And so then we're just gonna flip this over and line that up right in the middle. And then if you want to take just a tiny stitch here at the end, just to hold that on there, just as close to the end as you can, just so it doesn't move, just across there. Make sure it's nice and straight and centered with your crease that you put in there. There you go. It's just like a basting stitch to hold that in place so you don't have to fight with it. Got it? Very good. All right, so see, she's stitched across there. This is now attached. And we went ahead and put the interfacing on the other piece already. And so now you're gonna sandwich those right sides together. Line it all up. And you can put some pins. Do you wanna put some pins so it all stays together? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, so put a few pins in there and you wanna make sure the buckle is inside, not sticking out yet, okay? It's gonna be inside there and you're gonna sew across that bottom edge. So just grab a few pins and I'll help you. If you wanna hand some over to me. Last one. All right, so now this is where you're gonna use that 3 8 inch seam allowance, okay? Okay. So that's just a little bit wider than our quarter inch line that we have here. So that means you're just gonna hang this a little bit past, okay? And you're gonna come down this straight side and gently around this curve and you're gonna go all the way up, but you're not gonna stitch on this straight edge, okay? okay. So just these three. Got it? So just take mm -hmm. your time and we will do that and we'll meet you back here. There you go, all right. Okay, let's take those pins out. You can see she went all the way around those three sides. She even did the curves. How was it? Uh, good. Yeah? <laughs> Have you sewn curves before? No. I didn't think so. They can be kind of tricky, but mm -hmm. you just take your time, right? Okay, so now because we're dealing with curves, we are gonna clip these curves so that when we turn it, it will lay nice and smooth. So when you do that, um, let me just show you in, on this side and then you can do the other one, okay? Yeah. So the thing you wanna keep in mind is you don't want to cut through where you uh, just stitched mm -hmm. because then you'll end up with a hole. So we're just gonna make a few little snips just every quarter inch or so going around this curve so that it will make the fabric kind of split and it will help this lay nicer after we turn it, okay? You wanna do that same thing on your side? Just add a few little snips. Be careful not to clip through the, the stitch line. There you go, that looks great. Beautiful. It's fun, sis, because as you learn these things, you can pick up pretty much any pattern and you'll know all the things it's talking about. When it says clip your curves, now you've done it. Okay, so now you can flip that right sides out. Turn it out and your buckle's gonna be inside there. And then you can use your finger to kind of press those curves so they lay it nice and smooth. And then we'll press it with the iron. Looks so good, look at you go pretty awesome, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. You want to give it a press, make sure it's laying nice and nice and flat. And you can kind of feel with your fingers to make sure all these little edges 
are turned out and not sticking underneath, okay? You wanna do that all the way around. All right, and then press it so it's flat. Looks good. All right, so if you wanted to, you could come back and add some top stitching across here just to finish it up, but this is totally acceptable to leave it how it is here. So we're just gonna do that for now. And we are going to add this to the back of our bag. And so this is the exact same uh, shape piece that we used for our bag front where we added that first clip and the casing. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing on this one. So Ash went ahead and pressed this one in half just like our front. And we are going to put the clip now or this piece that clips on, we want to sandwich it. So let's go ahead and find the middle again. So I'll just, you want me to just finger press? Sure. Yeah. And so now we've got that little crease and we can line it up with the middle. Here's our, our press line that you did before. And so that is lined up. And now we're gonna take our other casing. Remember we set this one aside. Same idea. We're gonna find that center line, finger press. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to line that up. And now we are going to pin through all these layers. Okay? Okay. I keep losing my pins. I think they're ending up on your side over there. <laughs> so let's pin all of these in place. Perfect. All right, so now you're just going to... Oh, I didn't do it like that. That's okay, because you're going to pull them out as you go anyway. It's just to hold it where you want it. You don't have to worry about that. And so now we've got this all centered. We've got our bag flap down first and our casing on top of that. And now just like we did on the front of the bag, on the back of the bag, we're gonna do that skinny line of stitches to hold everything in place. This is just kind of that basting stitch. So as close to the edge as you can through all those layers. And you do have a lot of layers here. So really take your time and go slow. So we will do that. As close? Just as close as you can, yep. Okay. go so now you have the front of the bag and the back of the bag done mm -hmm. right okay well the back of the bag isn't quite done because we need to add our straps so let's get started on some of the pieces we need to prepare for that so we have these little pattern pieces that we cut out that are called our strap tabs and so we cut two out of our contrasting fabric so let's go ahead and pull these out and it says the first thing we need to do is fold the top edge, which is the long side, over a half an inch to the wrong side and press that down. So if you want to press that and this one. There you go. And do the same on that. And then we're going to fold them in half like this. So long ways. Oh, this one got real wide. See how that's kind of going downhill? Oh yeah. That's all right. We'll just straighten it out a bit and then line it up and press it in half that way. Do that. Same thing on this one. There we go. All right, so now we're going to make sure we have these um, turned exactly how it is in the pattern. So our half inch fold that's turned under is along the top and the fold of our fabric is along this left hand side. And then we are going to take our ruler just like this and we're gonna draw a line point to point. So do you wanna do that? So point to point, just like that. Yep. There's the first one. And then do the same thing on this one. 
Oops, make sure it's lined up first. There you go. Perfect. And so now we are going to cut on that line. And then we can get rid of these smaller scraps. So do you want to use your scissors? And you can cut right on those lines. This is a new skill even for me. I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. So it says you don't need those scraps, so those can go right on that line. Perfect. Looking good. There we go. Get rid of those scraps. So those are the two pieces that we need. And we are going to use our four inch long pieces of webbing that we cut. We had these two little four inch pieces. And then we need two of our rectangle rings, just like that. And remember all of these hardware pieces were in the kit that came with it. And so we are going to make this little loop like this through that ring and then we are going to open this folded end where it's turned under and we're going to sandwich that in there and then we are going to put a pin to hold all that together and we're going to sew straight down that side got it you get it maybe not you need help okay yeah. i'll work on that and then you can stitch it so it's it looks like it wants you to have the webbing go just a little bit beyond the fold so let's open this up and make sure you, everybody can see what we're doing before we pin this in place so we've slid our little rectangle ring through our webbing, we folded it in half, and here is the fold line that Ashlyn turned under back on that step, and we're gonna lay this along that center crease and just make sure that it goes a little bit past that fold line there. And so now we can fold this over to match, and we can put a pin in there to hold all of this together, nice and straight. And then now Ashlyn is going to sew just a little ways away from that edge. And you do want to backstitch at the top and at the end of that, okay? So let's put that under there and make sure your buckle is out of the way and backstitch at the beginning and the end. And I'll get this one ready while you're stitching that one, okay? Good work. Again, you just want to take your time with something like this because she's got lots of layers that she's stitching through. Okay. Then we'll put the pen in this one. How's it look? Pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right, so same thing on this side. Right down here, down that straight side. Oh, and you can actually sew all the way to the end. Oh. That's all right. Just go ahead and do it on that one, and then you can come back and catch this. And then now because um, you didn't go all the way down on this one, you do want to backstitch again when you first start just to lock it in place. And then you can sew all the way down. All right, so now that you have that first line of stitching in place, it wants you, or they want you to do, I should say again, a second line of stitching. Um, and it should be easier this time since you already have one to hold everything together. So same thing, back stitching at the beginning and the end. And I would just do it like a press, presser's foot 
width away from that first line and just go straight down the edge. And then you can do the other one right after. Looks so great, Ash. Can you believe you're making a backpack? No. It's crazy, huh? All right, so she has both of those ready. She put the second line of stitching just to give it lots of strength and stability because we don't want that to come loose. And then now we can line that up on our backpack back. This is the back. And so it says to measure up one inch from the bottom corner down here. And we are going to place one of these on each side. So we're going to go use our ruler and measure up one inch on this side and then we'll put a pin in there thank you so we'll put one there and then do the same thing on this side here's your ruler and then you can pin it in place if you want to so right there yep and oh here i've got some pins that in just like so and then just like you did with the casing you're just going to do a, a really narrow stitch close to that outside edge to hold that on for you okay on both sides ta-da all right that step is done let's see what's up next how about that okay all right, so what comes next? Um, the straps. The straps, okay. So to do that, we're first going to take this long piece that we have of our inch and a half, and then we have these little rectangle rings with the little slider in between. And so we are going to slide our loop through that. Just like so, and then we're gonna fold this down. Oops, maybe. So we have about an inch and a half. And I love this little ruler right here because you can see that's about an inch and a half. And then now we are gonna sew two straight lines. Be sure to back stitch at the, mm -hmm. the start and the stop on the end there so that we can secure that to that. So if you wanna do your first line of stitching, be sure to back stitch, and then we can add the second one. Very good. And back stitch again. And then I would just use the width of your presser foot to add another line of stitching because we just want these straps to be nice and strong. That's where all of the tension and stuff is going to come onto the bag, right? Mm -hmm. So don't forget to back stitch and then straight across and do that again at the end. You're going to do the same thing with both of your straps. Ashlyn's already got one ready to go. All right. So now that we have that done, we're gonna add it to the loop that we, these little triangle loops that we added, right? So that's gonna slide from the back of this loop to the front, and then we can put it through that one that we just attached, right? And so we can slide it just like that. And now you can see We've already put one of our straps on here, so now we have both of our straps through these bottom loops. And we also measured down two inches from the top of the bag, and we drew this line with our chalk marker. See right there is that line. And so we're gonna use that kind of as our guide for where we're gonna line up these straps now. So I am going to take this side I'm gonna make sure there's no loops or anything. And that one's gonna go up there. And this one, same idea. We don't want there to be any twists or anything. But we also, I almost forgot, need to add our little hanging loop. And that's what this piece is. And so, I don't know if you guys can still see, but we have our line that we drew and we have our center crease line. Right, you can still see mm -hmm. the center crease. And so we're gonna begin by taking this hanging loop 
and we're going to line the bottom up right with the line that we drew and we're going to put one on each side of that center line that we pressed. So let's grab some pins. Let's go ahead and pin this in place. Just like so. We'll put another one here. Yeah. And then now that that's lined up in the middle, we can take these straps and do the same thing on either side. So if you want to pin that one. Perfect. Got it. And then I'll do this one. Thank you. Just like so. And so then just do a narrow line of stitching to hold that in place. Watch your pins. Be sure you don't sew over it. And then we're going to put the little strap cover over it to clean it all up. So just slide that underneath the machine. You've got quite a bit of bulk now, so you wanna make sure none of that is in the way and all that you're stitching through is the back of the bag and those straps. So be sure to start at this first one and just focus a little bit at a time. Focus on one strap at a time, okay? And be sure to back stitch at the start and stop of each of those straps just to give them some extra strength. There you go. Now while she's doing that, I'll explain this little um, cover piece that we're gonna use to add to the top of the straps. That's just going to finish it off and make it look nice and clean. And so we cut two rectangles just like this and Ashlyn put them right sides together and she's sewn all the way around, leaving about a three inch opening at the bottom here. And so while she is stitching this, I'm gonna get this ready. And so I'm gonna cut off these four corners, just being sure not to cut through our stitch lines. How are you feeling? You doing good? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's looking great. And then now we can turn this right sides out. just get it to work through here. Looks so good, Ash. When you see a backpack at the store, did you think all of this sewing went into it? Uh, not really, no. That's one of the nice things about making it yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You see all the work that goes into stuff. Even at the store, somebody's got to be sewing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, did you miss a piece? Yeah. That's all right. That, this is a good time to, to find that. She just found a little spot that she missed. So you can just go back and stitch over that part just again. So just go ahead and pull this pin out of the way because it's not doing anything for you. Oops. And then stitch over that one little section. These are good lessons to learn. There we go. And I'm just using my finger and turning this little section right sides out for us. Did you get it? Oh yeah, you're good now. So I went ahead and turned the strap cover that you sewed together. So it's all right sides out. And so if you wanna press this now, and then we can add that to cover up these straps that we, she just tacked down. I'll show you how that will look. So just give that a good press. There we go. And so then now that's just gonna sit right across here. Press it in half to find the center again. And then she can just top stitch around. We actually went ahead and did this step already so you can see what that looks like. And so you can see we've sewn all the way around the edge and we added three lines of stitching across the top just to really strengthen where all of those straps come together. And so now the front of our bag is complete, the back of our bag is complete, and now we just need to work on putting it together and making our lining. So let's go ahead and move some of these pieces out of the way and get going with that.
All right, so we have our completed bag front and back that we worked on. We've got our straps attached here. And now we're going to put these right sides together. And we are going to put some pins in here because we are gonna sew straight down these two sides. And when you're doing this, you really wanna take your time and make sure you're not catching any of the straps in these side seams because we need those to move freely. So let's go ahead and pin these. There you go, you got a few. Remember, this is where you're gonna use that 3 8 inch seam allowance. I know we've taken a few really narrow seams, but these are the ones you wanna be nice and wide, okay? Okay, all right. So then let's pin this one. Let's put a couple more just so you've got everything laying nice and smooth. You don't want it to be harder than it needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that side, all pinned nice and straight. So let's turn around and do the other side. See, we wanna make sure these straps are inside out of our way. We don't wanna catch those in that side seam. All right, got those pins? There's a few more, okay. So here's this one. this one on things like this pinning really is your friend I know you're not used to seeing me pin very often when we make quilts but when you're making bags you want everything to line up right okay there we go all right, so I like to, now that I have it pinned, give it a little shake to really make sure the straps are not in that side. Okay, we'll tuck these out of the way so we don't knock them on the floor. And now you are going to do your seam straight down this side with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So that's about like that. And then back stitch at the beginning of this and at the end. She's gonna go ahead and sew both of these sides and then we will meet you back here. side. Same thing, you want to shake it out so that you don't have any of your straps in the way. Backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, so you've done the two sides. So now what do you think comes next? Flipping it. Well, we have to add the bottom, right? Oh yeah. There's no bottom. So for the bottom, you're not gonna just sew straight across. We're gonna add a bottom into this, okay? So this is the piece that's for the bottom of the bag. I've gone ahead and cut it out, and then you press a center mark, just like we've done so many other times. So I just finger pressed it. And now we're gonna open this up, and we're gonna start on one side here. And we're gonna take our seam, right there, you see that, where the two sides come together? And we're gonna line that up with the little center crease that I just made. So let's put a couple pins in there. Whoops. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna sew either side of this. There we go. So now you're gonna sew straight across because we put this right sides together, see? So our right side is matching the right side of our, our bag. And you're gonna come in a little bit at 3 8 inches. So take a few stitches and then back stitch. 
back stitch and go straight down this side. Perfect. And then same thing when you get to the other side. Back stitch. That's great. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the bag. So remember, you're going to line up with your center with that center seam. Put a couple pins in there. You want to pin some more? Sure. Okay. There you go. And one more up here. We're getting so close, Ash. Can mm -hmm. you believe it? Okay, so then just like before, straight down that side. All right, so now that you have the two sides done, it makes the rest of this part easier because see, that's just gonna line up mm -hmm. just exactly like that now. See how magical that is? Mm -hmm. And then now right where you stopped sewing there, that's where you're going to start by backstitching. And you can put pins in here if you want, or I can just help you keep it lined up. You want to just do that? Yeah. Okay, so a couple stitches, backstitch. And then straight down to this other side. It's looking so great. All right, same thing on the other side. Flip that around. And you can see how we'll have just exactly the right amount to sew straight down that side. Again, making sure all of our straps and things are out of the way. Let's make sure that one wants to lay nicely. There we go. Right. There is a base to this bag. Ta-da! And just like Ashlyn did all of this, we did the lining in the exact same way. We have that one ready to go for you. And so remember what I said earlier, we used um, all of our interfacing on our lighter pieces. So for the body of the bag, that meant that the interfacing went on the lining fabric. And just how we assembled the outside of the bag, like you saw here, we stitched those two outside seams and then set in the bottom square, exactly like you just watched Ashlyn. And so now that we have all of that ready, we can put the lining of the bag and the outside of our bag together to finish this all up. And so in order to do that, we are going to turn this right sides out. You wanna do that? Sure. Okay. Oh, and I should mention, we did leave an opening in the bottom of this, the lining fabric. So there's about a, four inch opening where we just backstitched uh, on the base so that we can turn this at the end. Okay, you've got that turned right sides out, just like so. So there you can see, here's our casings that we added. Here's the flap that's gonna come over the top. Our straps are on the back. It's really looking like a backpack, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at you go. And so we've got that turned right sides out. We're gonna leave the lining inside out, just like this. And then we are going to slide this inside of the lining. Okay. And we are going to make sure all of the straps and everything like that are tucked inside and I like to start by lining up the side seams because those we want to match. And so we'll just make them go opposite directions. And let's get our pins because we do want to use some pins here to keep everything from shifting. 
So I've got a pin there on that side seam. And then I'm going to come around to the opposite side. I want to make sure all these little pieces are tucked in so we don't have those come loose later. And we're going to do the same thing, lining up those two side seams. Put a pin in here, just like so. And then I kind of like to come to the middle and just split the difference. Put one here. Do you want to pin the rest or do you want me to keep helping? Uh, you. Yeah. Okay. And then this is really bulky on this back side here. Remember, this is where we've got the flap, our straps, all of that are on this side. And so this is really thick. So you're going to just want to take your time when you're pinning and when you're stitching through this back side, okay? Oops, make sure I get through that. There we go. And then let's put a couple more. That one's laying really nice because it is so thick, but I'm going to put a couple more pins on this side just so everything stays where you need it and you don't have to fight when you take this to the machine, okay? Okay, there's one there and one more here. So now I want to point out, Ash, you can see on here this is where you did all those narrow stitches mm -hmm. to hold things in place. Now that we're doing this final line of stitches, you want to widen this and make sure you're doing a 3 8 inch all the way around because then you won't see any of those first lines of stitches. You'll just have the finished line all the way around, okay? So let's start here, just kind of in the middle. So we're not starting on a side seam. We're not starting on a lot of bulk. This would be the easiest place. So then. Take just like two stitches, then back stitch, and then we'll keep going all the way around, okay? All right, you're in the final stretch. Pull out that last pin. You don't want to sew over that. Okay, so she's come almost to the end there. She's just going to meet up with where she started. And now back stitch again. And go in a few forward stitches. And there you go. Oh my goodness. She's gone all the way around. It's all enclosed. So now you get to do the magic reveal and you can pull this thing through the opening that you left in the lining. Okay. Be gentle because you've got a lot of bulk in there, but let's pull that through, okay? Go, keep going. This is the most exciting part. You're gonna have a backpack that you made. It's pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Can't get it. You can't get it, it's all right. Just take your time a little bit at a time. There you go, see, it's coming. Just got to be patient with those straps, all that bulk to work through there, but it's coming. Oops, there we go. I popped a few stitches, but that's okay because we're going to sew all that closed at the end. Should have left a little bit wider opening. There we go. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So that is the lining now. See that? Mm -hmm. And so see, this is, the, this is our opening that we left. And so now that we have this all turned, we would just pinch this closed and we can just top stitch that. But we can skip that for now because let's go ahead and just show them the big reveal. We'll come back and do that later. So we're going to put the whole lining inside our bag, just like so. Look at that. And here's our little flap that comes over and our clip clips right in there. And so the only detail that we have left is our paracord, which is the drawstring that cinches up this top. And so all we do for that is you'll put a safety pin through one side, you'll go around so that it hangs out on either end this way. You'll have two long tails on this end. 
and then two long tails on this end. And then you can cinch both sides and we've got these little uh, clips that come in the hardware kit that hold all of that closed. And that is it, that's your finished backpack. So pretty cool. Ashlyn, you learned some new skills. What was your favorite thing you learned? Um, I don't know. There you don't know? It, is it exciting though to have yeah. like a whole backpack that you made yourself? Yeah. And to know that like if you wanted to make a new purse or something, you could, right? Yeah. And you can pick whatever fabric you want and make it really just for you. I think that's one of the funnest things about sewing, don't you? Yeah. Totally. So one of the cool things about Quilt Cadets is it has these great little merit badges. When you complete these projects and learn new things, you get to use them. So you get a bag badge because you've made yourself a bag. Mm -hmm. And you get a precision sewing badge because this is an advanced project that you did. So there's that. You also sewed some curves for the first time. And this is your first Quilt Cadet project, which I think you started with the hard one, but you get the first project badge too. Nice. Nice, really cool. So thank you so much for coming on here and sharing this. And I hope you guys enjoyed another great project from the Quilt Cadets. And we will see you next time on At Home with Misty. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching At Home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.